I have a way of talking like this on the phone. Like I don't like. Yeah, yeah. I mean, AirPods are great, but I mean, it, like, they block me out completely, and I don't I never hold the phone like this. I'm always like this. Yeah, so I mean, just minute, like, suddenly some will come. Kadu to nahi khayenge. So I'm on a work call. Like sometimes when both the kids go for a play date or like a birthday party, and I have no work, and it's very rare that you know I'm like, okay, let's take an afternoon nap, and I'm just shut my eyes, and I'm just like. Are the kids okay? So what are they doing? And, what's going on? and then I look at Anga, then you're like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, nothing makes a difference to this man. I stood in front of them and they looked at me and they were like, you look good, but you know, um, North India, so maybe there's a little more staple of Rajma Chawal diet. And I was like, yeah, maybe. <laughs> so then they gave me about, I think, 14 days to get knock off, like five odd kilos. Karina. She's the kind of mom when she's with her kid, she's 100% there. And then when she's with, um, she's a professional at work, she's 100% there. And she just makes everything in her in her life just look like it's easy. I said, "Kuch hai mere liye lehenga ya kuch." So they said, "Nahi, ab lehenga to nahi hai aapke size mein." So I said, "Sari to." फ्री साइज होती है सो दे से दे वो लाइक नहीं पर सारी तो फ्री साइज होती है पर ब्लाउज का इतना फैब्रिक कहाँ से लाएंगे हम एंड आई डिट गेट फायर फॉर बींग प्रेगनेंट सो दैट हैपन्स टू दिस इज अ कॉन्वर्सेशन आई एम क्वाइट प्राउड ऑफ Our guest today has a career that spanned over 20 years. She started off as Miss India. and she's today a mom of two and the champion of body positivity neha dupia talks about what it's like to be a mom in the entertainment industry juggling what happens at home with what happens at work and what happens on social media take a look thank you for speaking to me thank you fay i should be thanking you for speaking to me matlab mere bhag khule hain kuch bhi no so you've got so much going on right now mom of two um you've it be 20 years now in the industry yeah more 20 years since miss india i'm um, 20 years since miss india and if being in the industry uh if the count starts from your first uh, uh paid job mm. then uh, my first modeling assignment that i got paid for was 1998 december wow yeah it's insane before we all had phones yeah It was a music video that was directed by Pradeep Sarkar, and Sujit Sarkar was the EP on it. We had the wonderful Amit Sharma, who was third AD. So yeah, talented bunch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not counting myself in, but yeah. So yeah, and and then and that's when I was just like, okay, and I'd never traveled by air. I was 18. I had never ever traveled uh, abroad, and they were like, you're going to go to uh, Mauritius. and that and I, i did the math and i was like okay this is going to be by air which is great another like you know take on my my off my bucket list and that time the count i mean the ask was very easy mm-hmm. also very simple stuff and uh, yeah and i was like this is great i came back and you know um, a forgy kid so in like dholakwa where i was staying everybody was like oh you're on that music video you're on on that music video and then a few days later they were like uh, please come and collect your paycheck so i was like wow you get to travel by air mm. in this profession you get to uh, go abroad you get to like hang out with a rock band that was for euphoria i did a music video back then and then they call you and they pay you money as well so i was like okay i'm just going to do this for a while <laughs> and then let's see how it goes i think that while lasted which yeah, is good yeah. how did miss india happen If I remember correctly, and those at that point you used to have those one-page ads in the mm. paper in the Times of India, and uh, I think my uncle, mm. you know, my dad was always like, you know, IAS officer and IF, IFS officer and stuff like that, and my uncle at that point was like, why don't you just apply? Because you're modeling a little bit, maybe you can give this a shot. So I was like, okay, fine, and I wasn't 100% into this, mm. but I was like, let me just give it a shot. and i filled that form and i i went for my audition to moria sheraton in new delhi and we were like you know it was like a serpent like queue of girls who were just standing wow. there and, and we had to line up like 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock onwards and for for what reason and i had this i was there and I, i still remember i was like the last person to be called in for that audition and there was this wonderful lady called ila and pradeep gua at that time in the room 
and you walk in and you've only heard yeah. of these people. Yeah. God bless their souls, they're both yes. not with us anymore. And uh, they looked at me and they were like, and I was in this, you know, this kind of jeans and white t-shirt and they were like, well, you do know we have a swimsuit round when you go international, so are you okay wearing a swimsuit? And I was just like, yes, okay, fine. And then I went back and I changed into my speedo kind of like, you know, swimsuit. And in my head I was like, should I wear the cap also? No, <laughs> that was a joke, of course. And went in, uh, stood in front of them and they looked at me and they were like, you look good, but you know, um, North India, so maybe there's a little more staple of Rajma Chawal diet. And I was like, yeah, maybe. <laughs> so then they gave me about, I think, 14 days to get knock off, like five odd kilos. Whoa. Yeah. And it was summer. And then I remember wearing like really hot fleece track pants and going and running at City Ford Auditorium at like two in the afternoon to get rid of that excess water because I, I was just like, now I want it. And there was like something called a GM, GM Motors diet that everybody yeah, used to yeah. do at that point. Eat that watermelon would, all day. Yeah, and then one day carrots. And But yeah, I mean, I tried all that stuff and I was just, I was what, 20 years old? I was 19 years old and I was like, I, I need to do this. It was, and I came back and I think it was, it was noticeable. I feel like a part of it is also, you know, them kind of, noticing, testing how bad you want it and which is, you know, I, I also feel free like if we had to go back 20 or 21 years, the standards of beauty were very different. There was a lot that could, um, that you know, that you could let go including conversations which if you look back now are not acceptable and that's why I I mean, I, I talk about the conversations that one has even now, yeah. like, you know, I mean, I'm changing topics, but, you know, for instance, people who troll or say things, they're going to be embarrassed of what they're doing right now, 10 years from yeah. now, because yeah. it's not going to fly. So, so tell me this, and you were Miss India, you're also involved with the, uh, you know, with the pageant even today. And from what we've grown to understand now, the idea of a beauty contest yeah. that sort of has a structured, I, you know, um, a, a structured sort of idea of what beauty should be, and what women should look at, look like, and you know how much they should weigh, and what their hair should be like, what the skin color should be like, and stuff like that. How do you reconcile, uh, in your mind, personally for you, being associated with beauty pageants, and what we know about it now? I mean, from the time that I was. Um, a part of Miss India to now that idea has changed like for instance you know there's no the, the height criteria is out now it's not okay. like you have to you know be a certain height secondly I think so I'll tell you where I come in there's I come in at the part where we, we start actually getting to know the girls honestly I just feel like after a point we all are aware that the end result is going to be, you know, a great designer putting them in great clothes, a great makeup artist, um, um, you know, kind of uh, doing hair and makeup on them. But more than vitals, it's now about fitness or more than, um, you know, who you are. It's what's the voice you want to have. And these girls are all, um, I mean, especially now, I'm amazed. They all have a voice, they have an opinion, um, they have a conversation. Like, I still remember when I was in that room talking to all the people who were judging me. I mean, we, we need to come up with another word, uh, but who were my judges? Like, you know, there was, the, I was always like, you know, watching my P's and Q's, but still being myself. But these girls, like, you know, they're all lawyers. And for instance, like, um, I don't know when this show is going to air, but I have goosebumps talking about the story. So there was this girl who, in her final round, mm. uh, I mean, I can't paraphrase the entire answer, but I, I can come up with um, a little bit and tell you from what I remember. I, I asked her this question, that if you were to change anything in the legal system or change a law, what would it be and why? And then she spoke about, uh, you know, consensual sex with your husband and to be able to say no and that should mm -hmm. become a law. Marital rape, yeah. Yeah, and then she spoke about marital rape and then, you know, multiple other things. To go on to center stage at the age of 
21 to be talking with that level of intelligence to have a voice to have the ability to to reflect upon people in such a great way i really feel like you know it's it's out of the box now you know which is great like the fact that we're discussing her yeah i yeah. just feel like today they just stand for um in relevance they stand for as much like back then also they would stand for a lot and more than anything else it's dreams it's careers it's all of that so it's no longer about lose these many kgs in these uh, or is it there is a fitness thing for sure I mean, how is that fitness thing measured i mean so there is no swimsuit round anymore hmm. so it's it's completely different so it's not like i mean even as uh, when we're looking at these girls we're not saying that hey like you know uh, we actually never discuss now that you're bringing it up because they're all looking great so that 80% they're already coming in prepared mm -hmm. i don't know how to explain this to you but these girls know what they want you know hey it's like um it's like learning how to write code in in like seventh grade in school. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I still don't know, and I'm I'm 42, and I'll just be like drawing a blank. But there are kids who know that. You know, times have changed. They're well prepared. Like there are some things that are a given. We're talking more about body positivity. We're talking about accepting different kinds of bodies: short women, tall women, broad women, dark women, women with wildly curly hair. Uh, making space in public you know in in public platforms for all kinds of women so that little girls no longer feel that they have to look like that in order to be beautiful is there room in the beauty pageant world for that yes of course there is i mean if you're talking about all of that i feel like that it has become more inclusive mm -hmm. but that's a different world you know fee i'm saying in the world of of okay in the in the world where we're going to just or in the real world that we all live in so that's one part it's one dream and i'm just saying that if you have the dream if you have the ambition of becoming that then it's completely different also we're, we're now raised to believe that that's not just the be all and end all mm. but if you want to go there and achieve that then yes there are some check boxes you need to fill it's like it's like playing sport you know you have to be fit or you mm. have to have that mm. skill set but having said that if your kid is going out there and playing a tennis match and not winning it doesn't make him bad you know and that's what it is like for instance my daughter goes to this wonderful school and you know um it's it's really never about winning or losing and i just feel that you know that's a different subject that we're talking about entirely and i'm in complete agreement with you when you're talking about you know um different shapes and sizes and each one being beautiful or different color and different kinds of hair or different kinds of like you know faces and each one being beautiful but that's that's everything i mean marketing yeah. advertising people um you know social media everywhere so you've talked a lot about being a mom and what that has meant for you as a person for your career for your public persona um, if we take it step by step, uh, you've, you've talked a lot about what you call the fourth trimester, which is when the baby is just born and the attention is all on the baby, and almost none of it is on the mom and just struggling through that period. Do you believe we don't talk about this enough? Oh no, not at all. We don't talk about it at all. We just don't mm -hmm. talk about it at all. And I feel like every woman with a voice and I think that everyone does have a voice and some some people just have a platform along with that voice I yeah. feel like everybody should talk about it and um, I'm, I mean there's no drama around it and I'm not creating any drama around it and you know I'm, I'm going to take um, notes from personal conversations that you and I have had because we became moms around the same, same time thing. and you know lots of other friends of mine it's very hard especially when you have to like you know it's it's hard even if you're not working and if you're a homemaker because you still have to pause a lot of your life yeah, and yeah. then when you are a working woman then you have to pause a lot of your professional life as well so i think that you know especially the first time around by, by the second time you're yeah, a little more yeah. prepared because you yeah, know these yeah. are going to be the beats and that's what's going to happen you see changes in yourself emotionally you see changes in yourself physically um there are times that you know and and i feel like the nights are so long i don't know if you felt that but especially through the night when you have to wake up like and the naps are so short because you have to wake up every two and a half to three hours to feed your child and yeah. Um, yeah. you have to be there 100% and then um, and then you never feel like it's enough 
It's never enough and it's then never you enough, yeah. decide to go out like 15 days, once in 15 days and somebody is like, how's your baby but you look really tired rubbing your shoulder, somebody talks to you and that's when you're like, yeah. why, why you know, am I, I having I this feel, conversation again? I feel like during the course of pregnancy, everyone, the focus is on the mom. Everyone's asking, how are you doing? Do you want to sit down? Can I get you something to eat? Do you want a glass of water? But as soon as that baby comes up... I want to, <laughs> I want, I want to stop you there. I want to stop you there because... Uh, don't be fooled, Faye. Even then, the focus is on the kid. <laughs> so because you're, the just kid, a, you're just, you're just a, carrying the kid. Just a suitcase. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah. as soon as the baby comes out, uh, the, the questions are about the baby, which is great. But the questions to the mom are all about what I've started calling the bounce back, right? Oh, so when are you getting back to work? Mm. Or, oh, you've either lost a lot of weight or you have some weight. Or so there's always a comment. So there are three questions that go back to back. One, when are you getting back to work? Mm. Or have you already started working? Two, there's always a comment unsolicited about weight. Mm. And three, there is a piece of unsolicited advice. advice. This is every single conversation. And I think that in India what happens is um, we're just awkward mm. around these situations. You don't know what to say. So you say three useless damaging things and mm. go away. <laughs> <laughs> and somehow the, the messaging then just entirely becomes about how quickly you are going to bounce back yeah of course it does and it's just like for instance I'll tell you this happened with me and many I've had many such instances <laughs> also because you know I, I I walk around a lot and it's how life is but I happen to go out a lot with my husband so I went for an event and and Angad and I went together and you know we were walking the red carpet and somebody happened to ask him this question saying or kya rahe, what's coming up next what are we going to see you and the question that was directed towards me was uh, like, so you know like I'm sorry but these are just like yeah, they are yeah. not like these are not assigned duties these duties you have assigned in your own heads that you think the mother will do you know but these are not assigned duties for us yeah. or like uh, I mean second kid it took me two kids and I think 23 whatsapp groups between art class and school and some other thing and something else I don't even know I'm giving you an exaggerated number uh, to, to finally like see one dad crop up on it saying yeah. so I'm not and everybody like clap for him yeah <laughs> I'm not saying this is not like and I, I feel that at no point like for me I never believe that you know there has to be any sort of male bashing at all when it comes to this because um, I mean I can speak for you as well like I mean we have our partners or husbands I mean at least Anga just like this 100% participation but there's so much assumed when yeah. it comes to the mother like there are no assumptions from him like there's been never like you know, and I feel that when it comes to kids, it's not just about the two partners involved. You've got grandparents, you've got your building society, you've got school, you've got other moms, you've got all of these other expectations, communications. The, the staff at home, who do they ask these questions to? <laughs> right? It, it, all of this then sort of plays a part because it takes that whole village um, to, to raise those children and everybody assigns several responsibilities to the mom the you know the the vaccinations the doctor's visits the clothes the shoes <laughs> the <laughs> yeah. oh my god and then somebody asked yeah. that question for me <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's not like i'm shying away from working but these are not like these are not just my assigned duties <laughs> i have a way of talking like this on the phone like i don't like yeah, yeah. i mean airpods are great but i mean it, like, they block me out completely and i don't I never hold the phone like this i'm always like this yeah so i mean, it's been like, Suddenly, some will say, Kaddu to nahi khayenge. I want a work call. Because everybody thinks I'm... I, I don't remember the last time I got yeah. on a phone call and, and spoke to a friend. Like for me, it's yes. like... It's been... My, my daughter's four and a half years old. And I've just called my closest and said... Like they're like... They've just, they just understand that Neha, yeah. she'll probably do a no-show or she'll not arrive. Because they, there are times when I'm just like making sure that she's going off to sleep or something else is happening and I pass out in the morning and I just feel so bad at this point in my life because everything is going great and I feel like somewhere I feel like I'm, I've taken my friendships for granted mm. but 
the real ones will understand and i do that and i feel like that's my my giving back to my friends who've gotten pregnant after me or at the same time that listen take your 5 years off i'll yeah. still be here and if they send me a message like a uh, diaper order where so like i know they're in a rush so i'm i'll just talk in code like you know or there'll be like one message saying uh organic mango So I'm like number <laughs> two. There is no extra talk. So basically, like, don't talk to me. Yeah, I have no time. Yeah. So, and I also feel like I've. I mean, for me, it's it's a whole like it's a sea change even professionally, and that kind of. Uh, I mean, I didn't pause my life because I I had kids. I was constantly working, and and you know the outcome and the output is your your. busy all the time but what i really do is that i'm an actor and i want to do movies and i want to do a show and now professionally personally it's great i mean i love my kids to bits and i i do my school drop offs and i'm talking about them and i'm looking at their videos and i'm like every other mom you know holding mm-hmm. them tight holding them close those check boxes are amazing but somehow i feel like i need to pick up the pieces all over again the thing that's changed is not that there is work in abundance i mm. don't know i can't speak about other moms who've had babies and who are going back to work maybe the kind of work that i do or i want to do the the good thing that happens with having 20 years of work behind you is that the minute you pick up the phone people give you those meetings yeah but there are important questions asked even there like for example you've become a mom will you play a mom will you be able to sign on an ott show and give us this much time um how's it going back home you know there are there are it, there are polite questions asked in a in a room but i also think it's those are valid questions like i don't see like you know if i were to put myself out there and say hey i'm the producer and if i were to cast someone but having said that not naming anyone i did get fired for being pregnant so that happens too I'm not saying I'm a very forgiving person but I may come across like one but I understand if I was a producer and somebody else was going through bodily changes I don't know you know if I'd be able to hold on for that long but then you have some great people in the business who cast you when you're pregnant who work with you or wait for you uh for instance I think there was uh there's there was an interview I was reading of Karina's where Ria waited for her to deliver for instance you have Ronnie Scruala who I'd shot with when I wasn't pregnant and then the second wave happened I got pregnant and I told him hey this is it like you know I'm pregnant and I decided to shoot so what are we supposed to do and he's like so what you're playing a cop and it's not like cops are not going to be pregnant so Bezad Pashan Ashley Ronnie all men in the business so they're great guys out there as well who you can work with so there's a part of the business that that asks you very important questions when you're coming back after becoming a mom and then Also there's inclusivity you know we were talking about this some time ago yeah and i don't know if this has ever been done before but i know that somewhere i may be a part you know a small part of a very big change that could be there in the business that women who are pregnant could be cast as being pregnant yes and you know i mean like putting on fake tummies to play a character is also a thing because you're acting and performing and that should be done if the script mm-hmm. demands it but if this happens to you and if you can fit that woman in do that because i w- i want to tell everybody like you know being pregnant is not our weakness it's our strength like try us out like you know don't just jo- don't just tell us to sit at home and and you know, not do what we love to do like for me i think that just to yeah. be able to yeah. work on the sets of a thursday man so much more than doing a film it was that i i i could a lead from the front there are questions there are insecurities that women in our business have that if you become a mom what's going to happen yeah it is going to happen you know and desk jobs people who work in offices work right up till week 37 if they want to yeah right so there's no reason why you shouldn't 36 be able to- week 36 i was um uh, working week 35 actually i was i was working week 36 i still remember i traveled my uh, contractions started at yashrat studio while i was dubbing <laughs> so bezad was there and he's like you sounding real real and i'm like can i get a stool cuz i can't put my legs down he has no idea what it's like to you know he's not a dad um and i was like no something's happening can someone call someone from home and no at one point i said can you crank up the air conditioning and that's when they said it's at 16 
and I was like, no, something's wrong because I'm sweating. But you know, these are yeah, exciting yeah. times and I just want to tell everyone that, you know, I'm a very small part in the industry. I'm a very small part when it comes to like moms and motherhood and, and you know, just having a voice. But I want people to know that, you know, there are, um, there are even women, now I'm not even talking about little girls who sometimes it's, it, you know, let's not have this cancel culture that you will become a mother, then your career will be finished. Absolutely. Listen, I mean, it's none of that. Like I know my closest friends who had like six months off and who could work from home and they just decided to go back to work. And let's yeah. not judge them. Three months yeah. later, after giving birth, she was there. I mean, head honcho in like the corporate world and she's fine. And her daughter is fine and she's fine and everything's fine. And now she, her daughter is 11 years old and we love our kids as much. Like don't judge us for like rushing back to work. We also love what we do. You know, I always, and I was watching you during that fourth trimester. So it's different. Like I was working from home. Most of the work is writing. Some of it is camera. But you have, I mean, in the industry, in the entertainment industry, you have to be dressed up. You have to look a certain way. You have to wear designer clothes. You have to go everywhere you go. Someone's taking photographs. What, what's that pressure like? It's a lot. Also the pressure which we've forgotten phase that, you know, some mums bounce back faster physically than others. Mm. And don't compare us to them. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, we're holding our babies close to us and we're as sleep deprived and as tired. And, and you know, we, you know, at the end of the day, we also are going through a lot. And then because you're so used to being in the public eye, to say that, hey, I don't check Instagram and I don't check, you know, social media is a lie. I do that. And, and you do check yourself and see. And then, you know, they're just like fat jokes and fat comments and don't use those words around us. And, you know, give us give us time, you yeah. know, and, and and there could be somebody else who like walks out soon after delivering a baby like they never delivered one, which is great. And I wish I could be that person, but I'm not. But don't compare me to that person because I am me. Just let me be me. Yeah. And how yeah. hard is that? That's not a big ask. And then it's, it just spirals down because the fourth trimester is a real thing and everything is spiraling down in your life. Like, and, but yeah. you've got to like, yeah. pick yourself up. And to all Constantly. the moms out there, you just yeah. have to pick yourself up. But take your time while you're doing that. You know, some of us want to get up like that. And I've said this before. Uh, I'm currently a journalist, an entrepreneur, a mom, a partner, a daughter, a friend, all of these things. And I feel like I don't have enough time to be excellent at any of these things. You're just winging it till the end of the day, right? It's just possible. Like if I if I had enough time, I could be a truly excellent journalist. But I just don't have the time anymore to do any of these things. So there's this constant feeling of I could have done better as a mom, as a daughter, as a you know, as 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 a spouse, as as an entrepreneur. Do you feel that way? Um. My question back to you is that even to sit back and think about I could have done better hmm. takes time. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have the time to answer and introspect so much? I say that, you know, sometimes I feel that. And the minute you're like, hey, I want, I don't know if you feel like this, Faye, but I feel like this. The minute I'm just like, hey, I want me time and this and that. Like, for instance, we have our fifth anniversary coming up, Anger Than Me. And I was like, I, I need to like spend at least like two days with him because he's been away yeah. shooting all yeah. of that. So we were like, okay, let's do it. And then suddenly it became like, hey, but what about the kids? And then it became like, but I'm shooting in Goa and the kids love Goa. And then it became like, get the kids. And get the nannies. And, <laughs> and now get the nannies. <laughs> and now like the 48 hour trip has become like a four day weekend with everybody there. Yeah. So, but would you much rather have it this way, hmm. like the circus, the circus I love, or would you like to just like, you know, sit by yourself? And the minute I sit by myself, like sometimes when both the kids go for a play date or like a birthday party and I have no work and it's very rare that, you know, I'm like, okay, let's take an afternoon nap and I'm going to shut my eyes and I'm just like, are the kids okay? So what are they doing? And what's going on? And then I look at Angad and he's like, 
I'm like, <laughs> nothing makes a difference to this man. So, you know, we don't know. Also, yeah. as moms, what happens is we do so much that when we're doing nothing, we just yeah. feel like something's wrong. And then we start yeah. driving ourselves up the wall. And that is the ultimate word that we're fighting, which is called mom guilt. Yeah. It's insane. I don't know if you suffer from it, but it's just... Oh, <laughs> oh my God. And we had God. this conversation where I called you and I was like, listen, I have this thing. I have. I to want to tell you something I, about that. I, okay, I I can I just talk about that conversation, please? You start. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so I called Neha um, and I called you and I, and I said, listen... I'm doing I, a quick one second phone check. Okay, we have time. I'm just doing one second phone check. All okay at school. All okay, yeah. All good. Yeah. We should put that in the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I called you saying, listen, I keep I take on commitments for work, some of which involves travel. And my child is very happy when I'm traveling. He's very well adjusted. And so sleeps on his own, doesn't have an issue. But I feel terrible. And as it comes closer and closer to the time of travel, I start to panic. Yeah. And then I'm like, I don't want to do this. I'm going to cancel. And this is obviously very bad for work. It's very bad for... Uh, for all of these things, but there's this overwhelming sense that work is an indulgence, that work is selfish, that I'm leaving him and going because I'm selfish. And, you know, there's this whole guilt that I feel. And I called you one day saying, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> I remember that. So I, want to t I, I want to tell everyone, so she called me when she had to go to the US and she was about to cancel. So did you cancel or did you finally go? So that there's no answer to that question. <laughs> <laughs> My only thing is, if you're going to cancel, just cancel on time. So can I tell you what happened? Yeah. A week later, I got a call. So, and I, context, I made her believe that she should go to work because that's what's <laughs> important and everything yeah, else yeah. will happen. And, you know, uh, Neil's going to be fine and, and Sagar's yeah. going to look after him. And then you have the yeah. nanny. A week la later, I got a call to go to the US. <laughs> and at that point, I just picked up the phone and I was like, this is great, but I don't want to be on an 18 hour flight. Oh, thank you very unavailable much. Unavailable to my kid. <laughs> and I said, no, <laughs> thanks to you. <laughs> so I'm not going. And I used those dates and I was like, okay, I'll do something in Delhi or something else. But no, 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 not yeah, it's, it's It's horrifying. It's horrifying. And it's amazing. Um, no, no shade on any of the dads that the dads are just yeah okay so i'm going on this trip yeah <laughs> the dads are just like you come back you just do a school pickup and then you're back and you ring yeah. the doorbell and there's a suitcase open and i'm like okay yeah. yeah there's like i don't know like when i have to travel i match my calendars but when again no shades on the dad but when <laughs> when shades on the dad yeah, yeah shades on the dad for sure <laughs> but when angad has to travel he's like um, yeah, I'm not here. Like, I'll get to know only like on 29th that mm -hmm. I know some that he's going somewhere on the 30th, but there's, yeah. there'll be one off conversation. There'll be a one off conversation, but nothing else. I feel like uh, we wind up being the boss, like, you know, the, the bad cop, because the dad is like, hey, I have to go to Delhi for two days. And you're like, what are you kidding? <laughs> oh, okay, then I won't go. But you have to be that person, right? Um, <laughs> who has to say that, hey, you can't because of these four reasons, but yeah. you can if you push it by two days. Um, and somehow that is our responsibility. Also, now that we're on it, I also feel that, you know, it's like when you come back from work, you jump straight into like what's yeah, going yeah, on yeah, at home. Yeah, yeah. Whereas no shades on the dad, <laughs> but when the dad comes back from work, it's like, I'm so tired. Okay, Pani dena thoda sa. Okay, I'll just, I'm just gonna take some time off. And I'm like, yeah. But you and I, I do the same thing. Difference is I do it in stilettos with <laughs> fake hair and eyelashes. You have it so much easier than me. <laughs> yeah. So that's the problem. And yeah. this is, so this is constant double life, right? Um, but which we, what you just did, yeah. which is I'm working, but my brain is also running what is happening in my yeah. house right now. Yeah. Right? So it's like, it's like that, uh, that quote that Gwen Stefani, I think, she she said this once that ever since I've had my baby, I've uh, I've been operating on fifty percent brain capacity. Yeah, because half of it is just clouded by you know what yeah. your kids are doing, and and, and it's not uh, it's not uh, it's not something that n nobody else can relate to. Like I travel in my head. So so I remember um, asking my I was telling my sister who called me uh, a couple of months after the baby was born saying how are you doing and I said. I have this constant sense that I'm screwing this up. 
<laughs> that I'm going to mess this child up and he's going to wind up in therapy and she said welcome to the rest of your life because her child is 18 and she said it doesn't get any better you constantly feel like you're messing this up it's so mean yeah. I feel terrible no but that's all the more reason you shouldn't pause your life for your kid all the more reason you need to bounce back to work sooner all the more reason you might as well make that money that when your kid troubles you when you know the preteen phase that comes from what i've heard horror stories of at least you're yeah. like hey you tell the dad that you figured this out on your own and yeah. you're going to go for a four day vacation to so the that Maldives. i can afford your therapy <laughs> also or your own <laughs> stepping off from the the mom wagon um onto the the films and pop culture wagon yeah. We have a lot more going on in terms of entertainment, right? You've got the short films, you've got the films on OTT. You did the minis, which were very mm. cool. Mm. Uh, do you feel that there's enough space now for characters that you want to play? Um, I mean, is there? I'd say that there is definitely uh, inclusion for actresses who are coming back from postpartum. <laughs> <laughs> that's what the business is about. And if that's your question, yes, most definitely, there's more work. Uh, am I getting enough? Like personally, I feel like I don't know. There's, there's uh, uh, maybe between what I'm getting and what I'm. I'm Want. wanting to do. There are two different things, and I know it's going to happen because I know that you know, I, I. I am that person who, you know, I don't know if I have as much talent as I have hustle. So one way or the other, it'll work out. Um, there's, uh, that there, there's definitely like, you know, for me, like, uh, shining examples could be characters like, you know, Shafali's in Delhi crime, yes. Sushmita's in, in Arya, or, um, I know Karina has done multiple films right now and they're all going to come, come out very, very soon. And I'm a huge Karina Kapoor fan. Like I'm so fond of her and, uh, I'm never going to be that mom who says she makes it look easy, mm. but she just makes it look like it's fun and you know, um, so just just to 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 talk about her for a moment so i was reading this book um uh, by john harry mm -hmm. and it's called stolen focus i've just started reading it and it's um you know basically he was talking about just how people don't have focus and they don't have enough attention and stuff in this dna age and every time you get back on your phone to actually get deep into what you're doing and to be fully focused on your, the human brain to realign takes 23 minutes. So that's the amount of time you've wasted. And I feel like yeah. Karina doesn't have that problem. <laughs> I feel like, you know, she's the kind of mom when she's with her kid, she's 100% there. And then when she's with, um, she's a professional at work, she's 100% there. And I, I, again with her, we had our children literally at, at the, the same, same time. time. And, you know, she, and, and she just makes everything in her, in her life just look like it's easy. I really don't know what's going on, mm -hmm. but I'm extremely fond of her. Like if you were to t ask me if there's somebody in the business who you really look up to as a fellow mom, she would definitely be it for me. And I think that, you know, when women appreciate other women, it's so important because only we know what it takes. Of course. I did one film just now after Gurik was born and soon after he was born and I'm also a little horrified because I, I look completely different it sounds wrong coming from me and but that's how I feel and I'm okay saying that and then you know my producers like some of the parts where I was just I feel like you know I had the potential of looking different or more like myself now they've been nice enough to like you know say hey we can reshoot these bits oh. so there are good people who, who, who exist in the business but I remember going on a film set then and I was just, I think Gurik was about one and a half or two months old and I had to go to Masuri, Masuri and I was, he was an exclusive breast milk and there were like packages that were like sent every day and every two and a half, three hours I had to like, you pump. know, pump and express and I was just hoping that I don't fill up at the time when the light is right for my shot and like I said, there was just at that point I felt like I jumped back into it too soon. But now, of course, my modus operandi is like completely different. And I know the interruptions bit, you have to set it aside. But I mean, I can, I can afford to do that with my time and myself is that I just keep a separate phone now. So that okay. phone is just, you know, call only if it's like super urgent. And urgent is not like, baby khana nahi That's not urgent. 
Maybe she's not hungry, so that's just life. I want to go back to something you said, where you said, I saw uh, some shots of how I looked in that film and felt that I could have looked better. I didn't like the way I yeah. looked. And I know that you're someone who believes very strongly in body positivity, but it's tough to see yourself look yeah. like that. Um, did you also face challenges with designers, challenges with outfits, challenges with, you know, in that sort of space where people are like, we can't dress you when you look like Oh this. yeah, all the time. I mean, designers are, are still more polite. Designers now have very strong PR agencies. And the PR agencies are just like, um, they just turn up, I mean, it's not your stylist. Like I work with mm. this really nice girl called um, Aisha and she's, you know, extremely polite and, you know, kind and, you know, she, she knows it all. And there's this also this other lovely girl called Asta who I work with is never about, you know, we don't bring up things like, we don't use words like fat or size and stuff in a fitting, which is just refreshing. Mm. I mean, um, one thing is, is talent and then the other thing is skill when you're dealing with people and, you know, I see a lot of that in her and she has that, but then there are people like PR people who'll say, oh, but we don't have anything in her size. Yeah. Or like, uh, that's still okay, but then they'll be like, how do we dress her? Um, this is, I still remember I had to go for my friend's wedding and now I don't need to hire it. I was going for Vicky and Karshina's wedding one month after Gurik was born, one, one month or six weeks after he was born. and. I was so excited about the fact that I was going for their wedding, but I was horrified as to what I would wear. And mm. everyone shut their doors. And I still remember there was this really nice, wonderful designer, um, who Puneet Balana, who customized something for me. And there were one or two other people, I can't remember their names, and I would love to mention their names. But I'm talking with the best people saying, Oh, yeah, but, and they don't even say that we don't have anything in your size. Oh, yeah, but large or XL, we don't make them. So, but now, I mean, I've lost like 18 kilos or 20 kilos now as of this morning. Sorry, 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 sorry. Just put it in promo. Just kidding. But you know, I'm just like, after losing all this weight, like, and then you meet the same designers are like, so when are we dressing you? I'm like, but have you forgotten the people you yeah. hired just were, were so rude to me. But and then on the ramp now everybody has uh, these really beautiful models who are like all different kinds of sizes and you know. Um, so you're saying they're pretending to be inclusive but they're not really? No, no, they're not. They're not. I don't understand because I don't understand who they're making these clothes for. There's this girl called Sakshi and she looks beautiful. and. There's, there's grace and you know that there's confidence and there's, there's all of that and you know there's always an applause but I just feel that but what are the designers standing for? More than anything else I just want to put this out to the designers if you're gonna and then they'll turn around and say that oh but we didn't talk like that it's our PR people so maybe get mm. your HR to hire people who are a little more polite more inclusive stand for the philosophy that you believe in and you know um, I, I I can't tell you, Faye, the kind of stuff, like the business, like the film business doesn't talk like that, but oh my God, like it's so... Fashion. Fashion is so, is cut, is cutthroat, is also fantastic. Like I, my older friends from Delhi have mm -hmm. never been like you, that. you started with fashion. I started with fashion, started with fashion and they're, they're great, but mm -hmm. it's like, um, there's so much um, idol worship for perfection in a box um, that, that that needs to change a little, a little bit, I feel. And I've always, yes, as far as being body positive is concerned, I mean, this is who I am, take me this way. But there are days that you feel like, okay, I don't like what I see. Or there's some days that even I pick up my little bag from here and I'm just like, when is this going to yeah, go? And yeah. when is this going to happen? Or, you know, I don't like the way this is or that. But having said that, that doesn't define me as a person. Uh, and I, I marvel that about my husband, like, you know, he makes me at all points. I mean, maybe it's just five years of marriage and may change after 10, but at all points, like he's always made me feel so beautiful, especially on the days when he knows that, you know, I'm, I'm feeling a little like um, off center and it's so important. I feel it's so important and, you know, that's the time. And it happens soon after you give birth. Yeah. You know, I, um, I read somewhere that a lot of designers in India actually charge more for a lehenga or an outfit that's plus size. 
because you need more fabric and it needs more embroidery and something. So it's effectively a fat tax, which is horrifying. But are they charging less? Because their sample <laughs> size is a size six or a four, but are they charging less for their zeros? No, mm. right? They're not mm. charging you're less. You're just for saving fabric. <laughs> yeah, you're just saving fabric and you're charging the same thing. Like yeah. I can understand, you know, if you're making a kurta for, uh, if you want a white kurta and if you go to a store and if it's for a toddler, a kurta is 1500 and if you have it for the mum, it's yeah. 3500 I get that. Yeah. <laughs> but not like, you know. Yeah. And, and the thing is that, how do I say it? Like, I've had some really, like, like really, I really have had uh, conversations with designers hmm. where I've picked up the phone and these are really big designers where I picked up the phone on the designer and said, that, listen, the part where I wanted to wear something from you is over because now I don't want to, but the part where I want to tell you that you could be going wrong is here. Like I'm talking about top designers in the country, top. Went to the store, I said I need something to wear for a wedding and someone from the designer's side and not the designer here mm. has said to me, when Angad was with me that time, so he, they said to me, I said, kuch hai mere liye lehenga ya kuch. So they said, nahi, ab lehenga to nahi hai aapke size mein. So I said, sari to free hmm. size hoti hai. So they said, well, they were like, nahi, but sari to free size hoti hai, but blouse ka itna fabric kahan se laenge hum. And you're like... And to you, so you can imagine me. what is happening to women who are, who were not judges on roadies. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll tell you what happens because we also go and do source clothes. We also mm. go and look at that. So, you know, the thing is for us, it's a very important barter. So, you know, it's relationship building. Yeah. So sometimes we take a look and we put it back. So that's how it works, the business. So it's not like, you know, and I'm talking about the biggest of stars. Like even if you're going to the can red carpet, the, the celebrities yeah. are not buying, but their teams are sourcing. Sourcing. So it's completely yeah. different. Whereas somebody else who gives measurements and gives a six month notice, so to but hum jab rake front row karte hain, tumhari photos Instagram pe dalte hain. So you know we do all that. So we we also do this. And the sad part is this designer doesn't even know. I mean maybe I should reach out and say that this happened to you. Because a lot of them are probably going to watch this interview and think is she talking about me or is she talking about me? And maybe I am. And I'm talking about like if you're going for you know an A-lister wedding, you're calling all the A-lister Indian designers in the country at that point. So they need to figure, they need to change something up and... What's the best advice you've ever received? My, uh, it's, it's, it's a cliche, but uh, my mom and dad, they always, they all, one is of course, I mean, have your chin up. So that's another thing, but my mom and dad have been drilling this in my head from the beginning that jo kuch hota hai acche ke liye hota hai it's a part of a much larger plan mm. and i genuinely feel and it's not i mean not advice but my parents when i was leaving uh, for mumbai for the first time uh, i'd never lived alone so i was going for miss india and i was 21 and my parents told us that, you know, and, and at that point, when they were saying goodbye to me, they were like, you know, take care of okay. yourself, do this, do that, and different things. And my mom told me, like, call us if you're in any sort of trouble, if you need anything at all. And that's when my mom and dad told me that, you know, success, failure, winning, losing, this is not trouble. It's a part of life. These are experiences. And it all happens for, the re for a reason, and it all happens for a reason, and the reason is always good. Hmm. So. I don't know, but I come from that kind of background where it's when something really amazing happens professionally, it's not like let's go out and celebrate because it's a flip side. Bhi hota hai na? That if something doesn't happen, to now ab kya karenge? So we've never been that family. So they're like, Aja thik hai, aaj hua, aaj hua, thik hai. Tum thik ho na? You okay? Chalo. Kya khana hai, kya yeah. karna hai. So yeah. it's not, we're not, we're not a family that, that, um, um, makes a big deal about success and failure and it's great because that advice is fantastic we're just operating on on a, on a frequency where we're unaffected by 
our ups and downs and our highs and lows that's why that middle ground is 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 honestly a very very good place to be for us what in your mind is your greatest learning from the last 20 years multiple but i think that uh, i i you mean professionally or personally anything anything that comes to mind um professionally it would definitely like i pinch myself every day see i'm so like i have i have so much gratitude for whatever has happened in my life because i know how i started and i know where this went and i know uh that it's been good giving you know the highs and lows the ups and downs all of that has been good so my only learning from all of this my takeaway is that just keep the hustle on like every mm. day and have have immense like like every day of your life and i want to tell every newcomer this also and this business is is harsh and it's beautiful at the same time and it gives you so many shades and colors in your life but like when you go to work like honor everybody be grateful for the jobs you have be be immensely thankful when people want to listen to you at an you know at an interview or hire you for a job or and take take control of your life a little bit like that's my biggest learning like now now everything is is also about teams and don't leave it to other people like be responsible for your actions and yeah. and and i've been that person my entire life and keep the hustle along like you know make it happen for yourself and uh, personally um have kids really fast <laughs> it's great <laughs> if i had my way i'd have way more but i mean yeah. like yeah i mean just have children that's fantastic is the best thing don't wait and maybe you should maybe like you know um fine like you know take time off do whatever just whatever you do yeah, just like yeah. you know it's great to have kids <laughs> have one or two maybe even three like just it's great <laughs> all right on that note neha thank you so much for speaking with me it's been thank fantastic you. thank you thank you